Right, everyone, we are back on the channel, and Jackie McNamara has joined us again. It feels like ages since we've uh, spoken, Jackie. I don't even want to think where Celtic were at that stage. I know where we are now. We're um, top of the league. We are out of the Champions League. We're probably out of the Europa League contention as well. Um, what what have you kind of made of, of the last wee while supporting Celtic, Jackie? Um, I think first and foremost, I, mean, I was at the game the other night, I think just being in the Champions League is a bonus from where we were last year. You know, it does. you, you can't just expect things to happen overnight. You know, there has been a, a dramatic um, change in fortunes at the club uh, since Ange came in, the football and everything else. So it does, you know, it's a different level. You know, that, that's, that's, that was evident. It's been evident in the Champions League games. You know, they haven't been poor um, in terms of play or di di different things. Yeah. It's just the levels, the quality that you need. And when you get chances at that level, you have to take it. You know, you see Angie's comments after the game, the disappointment there. But had he not been creating the chances or, or not leaving a glove on them, um, and in fairness, he's had a few um, injury problems. Callum's been a big loss there um, the other night as well. Um, Jota. But, you know, when you do make mistakes at the end, they punish you. You're switched off or do little things at that level. Um, you know, that's that's why the, it's a Champions League and that's what you want. You want to aspire to, to play at that level and do well. John, what's your sense of uh, the, the four games in the Champions League? And you reckon that we're not far away from being a, a good team at this level, yet we're sitting with, with one point from four games? It's tricky because you you don't want to gloss over like the disappointment of it because I do think there is obvious significant disappointment because you know the feeling was so high going into the the four games you know think about it we beat Rangers so convincingly in that derby and we were going into the Real Madrid game so excited and it's just a shame how it's panned out to, to be honest with you I'm one of the supporters that you know obviously don't like seeing Celtic losing or or not picking up results but I do think. Th as Jackie just alluded to, there is a bigger picture. I mean, I'm, I am one of those fans that can kind of see the bigger picture, I feel like. And, and that's not to dismiss the feelings or the raw emotions of how people were feeling in the wake of Tuesday night, because I fully understand um, that people were upset with it. But I do think, you know, year on year, there has been improvement in the team. I do think we're moving forward. I do think Ange is seeing things, you know, in, in the style of play and the way he wants to bring this team into Europe that can give us hope for the future and I, I, I do think when he says you know it takes time and, and and stuff like that I don't think those are platitudes I don't think those are excuses because I think if you even look at the teams that are doing well in the Champions League this year even Shakhtar to an extent I know they're, they've rebuilt um, a little bit but they've been you know consistently in the, in the Champions League groups over the last few years Club Bruges have been consistently in the Champions League groups over the next few years what Celtic need to do is they need to back qualifying up for the groups this year they need to back it up by qualifying again next year and the next year and the next year they need to build ahead of steam in this competition they need to you know that brings in revenue it brings in better players it brings in more stature it just everyone at the club will learn more about how to be a champions league club and and that goes from the players right through to the executive team so the big thing for me is just hoping that Celtic can follow this up with another qualification for the group next year and the year after that. It needs to be backed up because if you're taking this group stage in isolation as a kind of once in a five year event, it's obviously been a bit of a disaster. If you take this group stage as the start of something and, you know, group stage one of, you know, X number of, of groups in the future, then I think it, it doesn't need to be, you know, framed so negatively. So um, there is a big picture, you know, amidst all the disappointment, but it, it's been... It's been the four games haven't been, you know, that good at all for me, unfortunately. Mm. Jackie, do, do do you feel like it's just a, a case of consistently playing in the Champions League, playing at this level, making mistakes at this level that's going to, you know, get us to to achieve things at this level? It, it definitely helps. You know, you're playing against better opposition. The biggest thing is is the concentration. You know, in both ends, concentration with hitting the target, concentration with switching on with runners or watching the, the third man run, you've seen it, especially when they're tired, you know, that that's, it seems to be a, a, a thing with the team at, at certain points there, they, they hit the hour mark because yeah. it puts so much work and effort to get themselves in positions to to help each other, to press and to hurry and to be on the front foot. Um, and it is, it is very difficult to sustain that for 90 minutes when you're closing down and pressing like that. 
which is why we see Ange making probably so many changes around the hour mark uh, every every game. But at that level, then you're you're bringing players on to try and keep that and maintain that uh, you know ferocity and getting in about them um, when they're switched on. It is difficult to do that, and you can see at certain points there when they start to tire or certain things there, they'll pick you off because they have the quality. They have you know the not just the quality on the part, but the other ones to come on. You see the difference when they came on the lad, the um, Swedish lads, uh, Forsberg. Forsberg, the quality yeah. he coming on, the, the finish there. But just to be bits before that, before he scored the goal, you could you could sense it coming, you know, because the the gaps were starting to appear, and um, you know, and it's um, and I think that's been evident in a few of the games, like later on in in the matches and and games that we haven't done so well in. You know, the Superman games and stuff like that, uh, you get over the... And most teams will try and combat that against the team now. You know, you'll, you'll find teams sitting in and playing narrow then trying to get to that hour mark, then they'll go for it. Um, you'll, you'll see that more and more. Yeah, I, that is that is one of the concerns coming out of these matches for me is that it does seem like we're hitting a wall at some point and, like, it's about... You know, you worry about whether it's, we're capable of, of reaching that kind of doing that for 90 minutes or whether there does need to be an adjustment. The other concern for me at the moment is kind of the midfield without McGregor and, and maybe what I'm just trying to do with O'Reilly as a kind of deep in sitting midfielder. What are your thoughts on all that, Jackie? How do you think Celtic best cope without McGregor in the team? Because he's going to be missing for a few weeks now. Yeah, I mean, that was, in fairness, that was a worry before the game. Um, mm. Not just not just starting things off, but I think defensively and legs in there, you know, like that powerhouse, we don't have a, there's a few tackles, 50-50s that you think there yeah, we should be winning and are starting things off. And, you know, we, 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 it isn't one of our areas that we're most mobile in, with the, the players we've got there, we, we Tumble, we O'Reilly, um, Moy, McCarthy, there's not a lot of mobility in that, in that area. Um, good, very, very good footballers. But um, again, at that level, when teams there from middle to front, where they're, they're breaking, they're all quick, they're all strong, they're all technically very gifted. And that was one of the worries before the game the other night, who was, who was going to play Hitati, who didn't have one of his better games. Uh, I do like him, I do think he's he's a very good player. But, you know, you see a little bit, say, we maybe get a little bit more time in the ball domestically. But at that level, you know, he's... Rushing things and maybe losing losing uh, possession of the ball in certain areas, and the the teams can punish you with that. So, I mean, what what what's the midfield going forward then, guys? While McGregor's missing, I would I would like to see Abogard given a run. Um, I I don't know if he's way off it. Um, given that he hasn't featured or, or certainly hasn't started the last couple of games, but you know, John, this is a guy that we're led to believe is is a pretty exciting player and has done very well and seems to be a real coup for the club to sign um, surely getting him in that role while McGregor's missing is the thing to do oh yeah obviously I'd like to see what he, what he can do uh, you know because I don't really know at this point what we've seen about 70 minutes of him in action in total over his substitute appearances etc so it's difficult to come to a conclusion there what Jackie's saying about the midfield there it's interesting because when you look you think of the players that were linked with in the summer like Vinicius Souza, who ended up in La Liga, he was very much that mobile, disruptive defensive midfielder. So it feels like the club were looking for it and maybe just didn't manage to get it and in the end settled a little bit for Abogad. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but you know, obviously it came late in the window. It was a complicated deal with that that Russian club. So and and he's kind of nobody's really made an impact there. You know, Moy's n- not really come into the team and played that influential a role like in, in McGregor's absence either. So you're kind of wondering what Ange is thinking there and whether he kind of trusts these guy to get the job done. It feels like at the moment he doesn't and prefers Hak in that kind of more central role rather than being out wide. I personally would like to see Abogad, you know, have a shot at least, uh, maybe against Hibs on Saturday and see what he has to offer, but um, it is a difficult one. That For me, that is like the big concern about the team at the moment. You know, you know, a lot of people are talking about, you know, not finishing chances and obviously, but I, th- I feel like that's something that comes in time and just... Some of these players just need to get over the hump of that a little bit, but it's the midfield that structurally just seems about a little bit um, not optimal at the moment. I would say <laughs> maybe that's a kind way to put it. Um, how are you feeling about you know a lot of people have been talking about the the, the finishing jacket, the attacking. 
I, do you agree with me that it's just something that these players need to get over, or is there a deeper concern there for you? Um, it'd be a deeper concern if they weren't creating chances. Um, yeah. But again, a lot of the time there, it comes down to belief, it comes down to the pressure at, at that level, and that's what separates the elite. That's what separates the top strikers. They believe they've scored. You know, had that been another game, psychologically, would have, you know, a domestic game. It's it's everything that goes around it, you know, and handling that pressure. Um, you know, you, you maybe get one or two chances in the game at that level if you're lucky, and you need to take them. Whereas you maybe get four, five, six chances. You know, I think we're averaging about twenty odd attempts on goal domestically, but the Champions League. You know, you'll maybe get five or six attempts on target in the game, um, and you need to take a couple of them at least. And that pressure is also on the strikers to, to do that, to hit the target, to make sure they do it. You know, and psychologically, then you know they, they haven't done that um, because you, you know even Jackie Mack is coming on. He had a couple of great opportunities. We expect mm. him, especially the one with the header. Um, yeah, he would score that was a them. big one. He, he normally scores them. Um, you know and. But the good thing is they are creating chances at that level, but uh, they need to be more clinical. And I think that's Angie's biggest frustration that, you know, you can do all the stuff and do all the prep, but if the players don't handle that that moment well, um, you know, and believe that they, they can do that and handle it at that stage, uh, and they, they, won't, they won't achieve it. Hamish, you can see that in Andrew on the touchline, can't you? Like you can see it. Like that is his big frustration. Like he's not, he's not even that animated on the touchline a lot of the time. But when these chances are going a big in the, at the moment, he's just cut in a figure of frustration. Yeah, I mean, it was that Shakhtar away away game. That was the big one. We just missed chance after chance. You, you look at. I try to think back to to Tuesday night and. In terms of real, I think there's always a danger when this becomes a bit of a narrative that you make everything into a golden opportunity. In terms of real golden opportunities, probably the Yakimakis chance that Jackie's talking about, well, two probably, especially the header and the Kyogo header. I think other than that, you know, it was mainly kind of half chances. I suppose, you know, the one when we hit the post in the bar was a kind of half chance. Um, in terms of, you know... A, a, if we want to really achieve at this level, guys, I'll ask you both this. How much of this is development in the current playing squad and how much of it is signing some better players in, in key positions? Have you kind of got a gauge of that, Jackie? Um, I think it's, it is a bit of both, to be honest. But then, you know, when you're, um, if you're going out and spending millions of pounds, you're competing and it's, that's a difficulty. So Celtic, to an extent, have to grow it. You know, instead of buying it, they can't go out and buy a Haaland and guarantee guarantee yeah. the goals. You know, that that's the reality of it because of of where they are. Whereas more and more opportunities playing the Champions League boosts boosts that and the opportunity the opportunities for players to come. And I mean, this is the first season, really, for a long, long time that we've been guaranteed Champions League. So it helps with the recruitment. It helps the players, you know, to get the players to the club. Attract them that they and the club, obviously not to gamble if they don't, you know, financially, uh, if they don't make the Champions League, which you've seen year after year, you know, waiting to see if we get the Champions League before we go and spend money when it's too late and you've not, you know, it's speculated to accumulate one, but it's 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 happened so many times and we haven't qualified and in the back of that we've had to sell players going all the way back to Van Dyke's, Dembele's last day of the windows, you know, all the way through. Because we haven't, they haven't got there. Not just financially, but also for the players to keep them, because they want to play. You know, they're, they're not happy coming just to play in the Scottish League. Unfortunately, they want to play Champions League football, and this season was was the first real go at it that they have attracted players for that reason. Mm. So I know there were some interesting comments after the game uh, on Dyson and Maida, John, mm -hmm. that, that you mm -hmm. that you had seen because he's been a bit of a talking point after the game. Mm -hmm. But Ange had some interesting things to say. Yeah, I think when you look at someone like Maeda, everyone thinks he's 32 or something, but he's he, at 24, and I know 24 isn't young in football. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying he's a prospect or anything, but in terms of his career, making the jump from you know Japanese football to European football, 
you know, especially up to the Champions League level, he doesn't have much experience in that regard at all. So, like Ange's point was that you know we're not going to abandon Maeda. I know he's he's had his struggles of late, and everyone knows that. For me personally, I think he's been made a little bit of a scapegoat for the finishing stuff because although he has had chances, like as we're saying, Kyogo, Jakimakis, Sabada, they've all missed chances over the last few weeks as well. So I do think that has been a collective issue rather than a Maeda issue. Um, he does frustrate at times in, in terms of like being on the ball but yeah I do think he offers a lot to the Celtic team and I think Ange knows that and that's why Ange will continue to pick him he's, he was basically saying you know we're not going to abandon him now because he's going through um a, you know a, a slightly rough patch just on the transfer point you know it'll be interesting to see what kind of players Ange goes for in the market over the next two windows say because I feel like the players he's signed so far, they haven't necessarily been young players. They've been kind of 24, 25 a lot of the time. You know, even Kyogo was, you know, a fair chunk into his career, for example. Jakimakis, fair chunk into his career too. I wonder if we'll go a little bit younger to try and attract that kind of gem that we can polish up into, you know, an elite player at this level. Because we might have to go for a, a slightly younger option. As Jackie says, we can't sign to Haaland, do you know what I mean? So we'll have to find, we'll have to try and find players who can... You know, make progression up to an elite, an elite standard, um, and Ange has kind of admitted himself that he's kind of tried to jumpstart this process. He's kind of tried to accelerate all of this, you know, bringing Celtic from scratch up to, you know, the Champions League level. He, he's, he's, I think, I, I don't think he, he, he said he's rushed it, but I'm pretty sure he said he's tried to accelerate the process of getting there because he understands the demands of the club. I'm just wondering if it's now time to take a little bit of a longer term view now that we're here. We've got the money this year and, you know, all things being well, you know, we should be able to qualify again for the Champions League group stages next year. I wonder if we'll just take a little bit more of a longer term view on these things and maybe sign a couple of younger players that can push on over a, a, a two or three year period. Yeah, I don't feel like we're far away. I genuinely don't. I mean, we've been in every game we've played. I just think it's that bit of extra quality in the final third that, that we've been lacking. I mean, the game on Tuesday, I just thought, Again, you're comparing yourself to Leipzig, who spend you know tens of millions every every summer, but just that that kind of quality in the final third that they had in comparison to what we did when we got into good positions, I thought was was pretty telling. Um, I've done a wee bit of research in Club Bruges because they're the the kind of buzz a uh, couple of words at the moment that everyone's talking about. So I just want to uh, read this out. So we know at the moment they are already qualified from this season's Champions League with 10 points from four matches. Pretty favourable group, it should be said. Atletico, Porto and Leverkusen. Um, last season, uh, they finished fourth in a pretty tough group with their final four games lost. 5-1, 4-1, 5-0 and 4-1. The year before that, they finished third with eight points. The year before that, they finished third with three points. And the year before that, they finished third with six points. So there's been a kind of gradual um, improvement in their fortunes, five years in a row in the competition, which I think is the kind of thing that we should be going for. Red Bull Salzburg, another good example. They're four years in a row in the competition, third, third, second. And I think they're second at the moment and in a strong uh, place to qualify for the the last 16. So um, hopefully it's just a case of us doing that. My big worry now is that when we are done with these two games, there's a fair chance I think now we finish fourth in the group and our next European match is potentially, if we win the league, September the 19th or the 20th next year, which is 10 and a half months away. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about not having European football on its own. It's more just... The fact that I think the the last few months, basically since we won the league, have all been geared towards Celtic playing in the Champions League and all the kind of transfer stuff we did has mainly been towards the Champions League. Um, and my worry is now, do we continue to see development and progress in this team when they've already played in the Champions League and are now going to have a year, basically, of only domestic football? Is that a, a fair concern to have, Jackie, or is, is there enough other stuff happening domestically to to keep all these players you know completely motivated to, to, to go to the top level um that should be motivation enough um having a taste of the champions league and the nights there i mean being at the game the other night there as soon as the, the champions league tune come on the atmosphere and everything else you know the things that's stopping it is is obviously the league we're in the finances but that's been the case for for many, many years. There's nothing really, the Gulf's obviously got bigger in certain places down south, but the players should have that 
bit between their teeth they said you know what, I want I want to come back and do better at that I want to have a go at it we weren't far away as we've said um, we're creating chances I want to, and that's that's what you're in it for as a, as a, an ex player that's the games you miss the most as a player that's you know you miss uh, the Rangers games and the European games as a professional the rest of them were must win games they were all must win games but the, the different kind of pressure a different kind of um, set up to, to the game uh, build up to the game everything else the expectation levels but but you raised your game because the concentration had to be there you knew it, that we bought the, the moments there the, how important it was the, to switch on as a defender or, or, or the, the guys take their chances and as a professional it's easy just to go back in and say alright we're going win 4-5-0 domestically we're going to score another 6 goals and these. but as a Celtic player you're judged on the games like the other night that's what the fans crave judged on Rangers games um, but because we haven't had that for a number of years when you do get that opportunity you have to take it and you have to have the fans on your side um, and that's that's the good thing though that's why it's good we're talking about it this way because that means the club's going the right direction again you know the fans are there talking about Champions League and and wanting to aspire to get to that. Yes, there's a massive gulf, but you know, if you do things properly, right recruitment, you invest properly. As you've said there, you know, we can't afford the Haaland, but why not go and get guys like Haaland when they're starting out four or five years ago? Could have got them from older. But that's that's what I'm talking about here, but developing your own players, doing it properly. So there's a continuation at the club throughout the years. So you've got one coming through, and there's another one coming through. And you know, in the next number of years, you don't have to go and splash out millions of pounds because you've got the backup there in your academy and doing it properly. Yeah, obviously, disappointing um, not to get a result. I think uh, for a large part for the, the match, we played really well. You know, we created chances, um, so you couldn't take it. And I think at, at this level, if, if you don't take your chance when you're on top, you can, you can get punched. It, it did feel very reminiscent of the, the all the games as well. Is that it feels in dressing room? Yeah, I think so. You know. Um, you know, I, th- I think we're close. I think we're close to picking up results at this level, but you know, it's a you know, it's a big learning curve for us, and we've got to keep working hard. You know, hopefully, hopefully we'll get there. How's it been for you, captain of the team? I mean, I know right now it's a bit of disappointment yeah. for you, but you've got the armband. What does that mean to you? Yeah, no, um, it's it's an honour. You know, obviously, so it's a massive club. It's so to, to be leading the boys out, be captain, it means a lot to me. And um, yeah. sure, sure. I know, I know, you're disappointed after the result tonight, but on the performance over the 90 minutes, on your performances in all four games, how positive can you be going into the last two games? Yeah, I mean, it's still two games for us, you know, we want to we go out there and, and try and um, recreate the performance that we've had so far, but obviously try and, try and get that, that goal. Um, and yeah, um, like, you said, I, like I said earlier, I think we're close, yeah, it's just that, it's that final little bit. There's not too many players in the squad, obviously, in terms of the pedigree, so at the very least, do you think you're better? still for this experience? 100%. Um, you know, playing against the best teams in the world, best players in the world, it, it, can, it can only improve you, you, you as an individual and you as a, you as a squad as well. I mean, you, you've been out injured and you came back Saturday. Are you 100% or are you, you, you coming back because it's always something you're needed? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm fit. I'm, I'm ready to play. You know, um, so I, was, I was only out for two weeks, so it weren't too long, but, but yeah, I'm getting back into the group of stuff. What, was it a muscle injury? It was a knee. A knee? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the manager was speaking yesterday about the intense fixtures from the period of time. Is that an effect on the squad? Do you think just so many games? Oh, uh, maybe. You know, but you know, injuries are part of football. Week. They can happen at any time. Whether you've got two games a week or one game a week, hey, they happen. You know, but you know, as a squad, we, I think we've got a good enough and big enough squad to, to deal with them kind of thing. You're going to have to be shut up. So you'll, you'll see a partnership with Jens is developing. Are you enjoying playing alongside him? Yeah, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy playing with all, all the centre backs we have here. They're all, all good players and. Yeah, you know, it's all at centre back pairings. The more you play together, the more you get to know each other, and the, the partnership improves. So, so yeah. I think just just this discussion that we're having here today has made me feel a little bit better about the situation, to be honest with you, because I do feel like Jackie says there. I do feel like there is a will from the supporters, and it feels like there's a will from the club at the moment to try and get to where we want them to be. And I understand what you're saying, Hamish, about your concern about you know are the players going to you know. Have they reached this this peak and the, and this was the peak for them and it's it's going to be downhill, but that's on Ange as well, isn't it? And I don't I don't think Ange has been communicating that 
the peak of being a Celtic player is just taking part in the Champions League and just entire message is that he wants to turn Celtic or at least wants to start the process of turning Celtic into a club that can really compete at the elite level and that that's what he's been saying to the players he's not been just building up building them up to this group stage just to you know have a, a nice few nights and then go away see you later it's been a it's been a, a message of just total improvement so that they can actually excel at this level have people talking about them at this level and i think the players will feel disappointed that they haven't been able to do that this season and hopefully you know that's the fire they need to to keep it going for another 12 months and and keep the cycle going. Now, I'm not saying we will hold on to all our players, and I think this is ultimately the challenge, is we're talking about Celtic developing over a three- to five-year period, and that's really difficult to do when the reality is that, you know, a lot of these players might leave in that window as well. You know, that that's just been the, the reality of Celtic over the last decade. So it's all about the club as well, above Ange, and you know, selling on those players and reinvesting in, in the team. And as as Jackie's saying, you know, bringing the right, right type, types of talent to replace them. So it's a massive task ahead for, it's not just the Ange and the players, but for the entire club. And um, But when you're talking about motivation and getting back to domestic football, that's all an Ange for me. Like, it's, it's just like keeping that fire lit in the players and making sure there's no complacency creeps in. The little bit of concern for me, European blip kind of an impact our domestic form in a way. We've got some tricky games coming up over the, the next period. We've got Hibs, then we've got Hearts away at Tynecastle. We're playing Motherwell away in the Cup. We're away to Livingston at one point over the next month. So it is difficult. Do players separate that in their, their mind, Jackie? Are they able to separate domestic and European football or, or will this all just be a big melting pot, pot for them? Can one thing impact the other? Yeah, I mean, confidence-wise, yeah. I think, um, obviously, they haven't been uh, after... It's a Dundee United game. Some mum games kind of rocked it a bit, you know, and the, the, the international games as well in between. Um, and it's just getting back into the groove again. Um, but one win can change that confidence, get a few goals. You know, the, the worry is after the, these big European nights, you're on such a high, the fans are on such a high, then it's a domestic there. And sometimes the players have got to get the fans up by how they go and play and perform and create chances, score goals. You know, so they help each other. It goes hand in hand. Um, the fans react to what they see in the pitch. You know, especially um, after a big night like the other night. So it's important they start well um, uh, and perform. Hamish, just for you, like I've noticed, the fans. There has been a reaction to Tuesday. Obviously, there was obviously an initial reaction, but I feel like a lot of the the fan feeling at the moment has actually been, uh, you know surprisingly constructive in a way like I, I have seen a lot of fair analysis or fair kind of criticism of the team and kind of this the kind of discussion we're having now in, in terms of like wanting Celtic to be better recognizing we're not there yet but but you know not making excuses for the team but understanding that this is there is a bigger picture here I've actually been a you know the the initial reaction to Tuesday was pretty fierce but the, you know the the last you know twenty four hours or so, it's actually mm. been a lot calmer, and I think the fans will be on board on Saturday and, and going forward again. Yeah, I mean, as you say, Tuesday night, I think everyone was was everyone was really frustrated with with the way that played out. But you know, even yesterday's video, the the, the comments on on the channel were, you know, pretty constructive. Everyone, I think, is taking a, a relatively positive um, kind of. A wide scale view in this. You, we, we know where we were a year ago and we know where we are now and it's a, a massive improvement and who knows where we could be a, a year from now. So yes, um, lots to be uh, positive about despite the other night. Um, shall we lower the tone and chat about VAR just briefly for the last few minutes guys because um, VAR is coming to Scottish football. I think we, we knew that but we now know when it will first be used. Uh, I believe we're talking Hibs v St. Johnson a week tomorrow. So a Friday night game uh, will be the first match where it will be used with our game at Hearts the following day uh, being Celtic's first involvement and the first to be on television as well. Um, VAR will also be used for the Scottish Cup and League Cup semi-finals and final. It will be coordinated centrally from the video operations room at Clydesdale House. Uh, it will be operated in line with FIFA's laws of the game using Hawkeye with uh, the SPFL's production partner QTV providing it. Um, 
Production will increase to a minimum of six cameras. Video assistant referees will assist on-field referees in four areas uh, where obvious errors or serious missed incidents occur. Straight red cards, penalty area incidents, goals and mistaken identity. Uh, how much of a shambles is this going to be, Jackie, when it gets underway? Yeah, I've got a feeling they're going to be talking about this a lot. <laughs> 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 and who's 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 making decisions in the studio? Because <laughs> mm. uh, that's 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 obviously the worry and the concern. At least you can see and you know who's standing there with a whistle in his mouth. You can blame him or the the linesman. Um, but no, there's going to be so so many talking points with it. Uh, you're hoping you hope that it is going to help and assist the referees. Um, but you know. I think what we've seen so far with VAR, there's, there's there's no consistency with that at times either. These yeah. hand, the amount of hand balls you get that mm -hmm. are so alike and some are, some aren't. It's it's uh, yeah. I think uh, it's going to be interesting. Put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't totally heartened by the chief executive of the SFA Ian Maxwell coming out this week and saying the first three months will be horrendous so I mean if he's saying that <laughs> then what hope do the rest of us have and um, so that that's um that wasn't great I'm pretty skeptical of it I'm skeptical of it being introduced at this stage of the season I'm skeptical of how much benefit it will bring to Scottish football I think ultimately like it was you know, every league, well, most leagues in the world are moving towards it, so it was inevitable we were going to get it at some stage. Um, like you say, there's it's going to cause problems because you know the consistency with our there is there is no consistency. I was watching, I think it was um, Napoli Ajax last night, and there was a handball in that game that yeah. I was pretty mm -hmm. confused about. To be to be frank with you, and yeah. something like that happening at Tyne Castle with Celtic, or even in a match with 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 the Rangers at another time would just. Call, you know, Scottish football likes to create drama at the best time, so I'm sure we'll manage to to get a lot of drama out of this. Um, let's put it that way. I don't think it's going to quiet anything down, um, but hopefully, um, in time, over time, it improves to the point where it, it is a major benefit to because there have been a lot of obvious calls in Scottish football over the last decade that you would suggest that VAR could fix, but it's just about whether it will or not, unfortunately. Just embrace the chaos. That's what I say. I can't yeah. wait for it. It's going to be. Uh, I just think we need. I think we need it because I just think if we don't have it, we're just left behind even more so by you know kind of richer leagues. So I don't know when they're mentioning six cameras. That seems quite light to me in comparison yeah, well, to other leagues. One one of the problems for me is that most of the games will have six cameras, but the games that are on Sky yeah. will have four to fourteen cameras, and so yeah. there's going to be disparity there. Where there's going to be more scrutiny on decisions in the games that are on Sky, which are obviously. Um, heavily um, favour Celtic and Rangers or, you know, hinder Celtic and Rangers depending on how you want to look at it. So that is another issue with the whole thing. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, right? We shall uh, we shall leave it there. Tomorrow we will build ahead to a pretty big game against Hibs on Saturday. Looking forward to that one. Uh, Jackie and John, thanks very much for your time. Thanks everyone for tuning into this and we'll speak to you tomorrow. <laughs>